In Central Africa, there is a small country that shares the same Hispanic roots with the countries of our region. Equatorial Guinea was one of the few Spanish dependencies in continental Africa, making it the only African country internationally recognized with Spanish as the official language. Are you interested in learning about the history of this forgotten sibling? All right, then stay until the end of the video. Subscribe to the channel. The mainland was populated much earlier than the islands. Some Bantu peoples would settle around the Muni River. Among these peoples, the Fan ethnicity stands out, the majority ethnic group to this day. Other ethnic groups that inhabited the territory were the Molengues, Dohues, Batangas, and Bengas. These peoples would have inhabited the territory since 2000 BC, and rather than organize states, they were distributed by tribes. In 50 BC, the Island of Lightning would be populated, where remnants such as axes, bracelets, and spears were found. However, this island would be abandoned around the 14th century and would not be repopulated until the arrival of the Europeans. On the other hand, the settlement of Bioko Island took place between the 5th and 6th centuries. The first Europeans to arrive in Equatorial Guinean territory were the Portuguese, during an expedition of the Gulf of Guinea in 1471, the navigator Fernão de Po discovered the island of Bioko, which is why this island would later be baptized with the name of the Explorer. During the following decades, the Portuguese conquered the islands of Anobon and Lightning, where they established factories for the slave trade, in addition to the exploitation of resources such as sugarcane. As for Bioko, it was obtained with greater difficulty due to diseases and the hostility of the local tribes. The Spanish noticed the Portuguese. They first established Equatoguinean territory on the island of Anabon during the expedition of Garcia Jofre de Loaiza in 1525, although without settling. Other Europeans to arrive would be the Dutch, who without the consent of the Portuguese settled on the island of Bioko. Taking advantage of the Portuguese Restoration War, while the Portuguese and Spanish were fighting, the Dutch East India Company occupied the islands of the Gulf of Guinea between 1642 and 1648, although they would eventually be expelled after the Portuguese created a company on the Island of Lightning, which replaced the same type of trade as the Dutch. The islands remained under Portuguese rule until 1777, after the treaties of San Ildefonso and El Pardo signed by Portugal and Spain, the islands plus a sector of the Guinea coast between the Niger and Ogoe rivers would pass under Spanish sovereignty along with the colony of Sacramento in exchange for allowing the Portuguese advance on Brazil. Let's remember that since the Treaty of Tordesillas, Spain and Portugal had separated areas of conquest, so Spain had not interfered in Africa since then. Administratively, Spain's African territories would be under the jurisdiction of the recently created Vice Royalty of the Rio de la Plata under the name of the Governorship of Fernando Po and Anobon. With this, an expedition would set out in 1778 from Montevideo, where possession of the Equatorial Guinean territory was taken in the name of King Charles III. However, with the disintegration of the Vice Royalty of the Rio de la Plata, during the 1810s, Buenos Aires would relinquish sovereignty over the African territories due to their remoteness. Because of this, Equatorial Guinea fell into oblivion for a time. The British would occupy the island of Bioko around 1826 under the pretext of fighting against the slave trade. During this period, they would establish Port Clarence, which would later be renamed St. Isabel by the Spanish, and after independence as Malabo, yes, the country's current capital, the British would withdraw from the island in 1832, although still interested in Fernando Po, so they proposed to the Spanish government the purchase of this island. However, Spain was already strengthening ties with both the islands and the mainland. Around 1845, Queen Isabel II authorized the voluntary transfer of free blacks and mulattoes from Cuba and Puerto Rico, her only territories still in America, to Equatorial Guinea. Although since there were no volunteers, the immigration of 260 of them was forced. During the following decades, there were turbulent internal struggles among the various tribes. 
typical in African countries with ethnic differences. With this, in 1858, the first Spanish governor of Fernando Po Charles Chacon and Michelena was appointed, who would achieve the formal submission of several local chiefs. One of the most representative, King Boncoro the Fuire of the Venga ethnic group from the Island of Lightning. Towards the 1870s, the continental territory began to be explored by various expeditions, such as that of Manuel de Iradier y Bulfi, who managed to end insurrections of some stateways of the Fang ethnic group. The borders themselves of what would be the continental part of the Muni River were delimited during the partition of Africa at the Berlin Conference. As Spain was a waning power for this, it only managed to get a strip of 26,000 kilometers in the Gulf of Guinea. Around 1,900, Rio Muni went from protectorate status to colony. In 1,900, the islands were unified into the colony of Elabe Anabon and Lightning, while Fernando Po remained as a separate colony. Due to a lack of labor, a contract was signed with the Republic of Liberia, which resulted in about 15,000 workers migrating to the Spanish colonies. The population was increasing. With better organization, the exploitation of wealth was intensified, which in turn favored the modernization of the country. However, this would lead to confrontations with local tribal leaders, forming anti-colonial nationalist militias, which were quickly suppressed. The most important confrontation was the punitive expedition of Rio Muni in 1918, in which the Spanish crown launched a punitive operation in Bata, on the mainland. Here, the chief of the village of Mahuomo named B was executed, after which the rebel groups would offer redemption. In 1924, the three colonies unified to form Spanish Guinea. By that time, the traditional structures of the tribal kingdoms had already dissolved, transitioning to the political system implemented by the Spaniards. The tribes, however, were still symbolically represented by a king in Bioko. The first of them, Malabo Bruyer. Yes, hence the later name of the country's capital. During the 30s, Equatorial Guinea remained loyal to the Second Spanish Republic. Because of this, during the Spanish Civil War, the rebel Francoist forces invaded Equatorial Guinean territory, gaining control of it, which in the long run became part of the territory governed during the regime of Francisco Franco, who would grant them the status of overseas. Spanish provinces around 1959. During the Second World War, even though Spain remained neutral, a naval confrontation occurred between the United Kingdom and Germany, known as Operation Postmaster, near the island of Fernando Po. After this war, a decolonization process begins in Africa due to the decline of the European powers. Various independence movements demanding autonomy would arise both in Equatorial Guinea and in other countries. In response to the pressures, the Spanish government called a referendum for the autonomy of Spanish Guinea in 1963. With the majority voting yes, it became an autonomous territory now called Equatorial Guinea. In 1965, a UN assembly passed a resolution requesting Spain to set full independence. Spain would eventually yield to nationalist and UN pressures, granting full independence in 1968 after a new referendum. This year also saw the first free elections where a candidate was elected, the country's first president, Francisco Macias Nguema. In 1969, Macias announced that the opposition had attempted to perpetrate an alleged coup d'etat, which served as a pretext for him to eliminate the opposition and establish a dictatorial regime. This included a growing anti-Spanish sentiment that sparked a diplomatic crisis between the two countries. As a result, almost all of the white population whose integrity was at risk, Macias created a regime with a single party, the National Single Party of Workers. He aligned himself with the Soviet Union, establishing a socialist regime with strong repression of the opposition that included the death of thousands of people, religious repression, totalitarianism, and anti-imperialism. All of this was embodied in a new constitution that created a unitary state. Dictator Macias was toppled by a coup d'etat. In 1979, by a group of armed forces officers led by Lieutenant General Theodore Obian, this was known as the Coup of Freedom. After the Battle of Nifian that divided the armed forces between illegal revolutionaries to Macias, 
the dictator was deposed and executed, assuming Obi-An as the new president. And you will say, at last Equatorial Guinea achieved democracy. Well, no. In fact, there was a new dictatorship that continues to this day. Both the Punt and Macias's constitution were dissolved. So a new constitution was established in 1982, which named Obi-An as president for seven years. In the 90s, oil activity began, which meant a considerable economic increase for the country. Although this did not go hand in hand with the reduction of income inequality and poverty, which still affects more than two thirds of the population. To the social crisis is added the political one, given that Obian would cling to power in the subsequent elections that have been described as fraudulent. His regime has been labeled as one of the most repressive in the world today due to the disappearance of opponents, nepotism, lack of press freedom, and manipulation of electoral processes. And that's it for today's video. Now I want to know your opinion. Had you heard of this Hispanic country in the center of Africa? Do you think it will ever gain its freedom? Don't forget to leave your comment, and if you like this video, support me with a like and subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on my social networks, and if you want to support this project, any donation on Patreon will be welcome. See you next time. Subscribe to the channel.